Good evening, you're watching Just the News. I'm Amitabh Balachandra. We start off with our top story. The Supreme Court has ordered the transfer of trial court proceedings in the Gyanwapi Mosque case to the court for district judge in Varanasi. Now, the bench has said, and I quote, Having regard to the sensitivity of the civil suit case, this case before the civil judge Varanasi shall stand transferred and be heard by senior and experienced judicial officer of the UP Judicial Services end court. Now, a Varanasi trial court had been hearing a petition filed by five women who have sought permission to offer daily prayers and observe other Hindu rituals at the back of the western wall of the Gyanwapi Mosque. Now, they have claimed that an image of the Hindu deity exists at the site. Now, the Supreme Court is hearing a petition in the meantime filed by the Anjuman in the Zamia Masjid Committee, the caretakers of the mosque, challenging the Varanasi court's order to conduct a survey of the mosque. Now, in the meantime, on Monday, the local court had directed district officials to seal a part of the mosque where a shivling was alleged to have been found. A day later, the Supreme Court directed officials to protect the spot where this alleged shivling was found. It's also said that Muslims in the meantime should not be restricted from offering prayers at the mosque. Meanwhile, uh, the Supreme Court today has granted an extension to the Supreme Court appointed committee probing the Pegasus spyware case. Now, a bench headed by Chief Justice N.V. Ramana has said that the committee would complete its uh, inquiry by May end. The report will be handed over to the Supreme Court by the 20th of June, the committee said, after it is examined by a supervising judge. Now, the court will hear the matter next in July. The committee has told the Supreme Court that it examined 29 mobile devices suspected of infection by Pegasus. Now, Pegasus is a spyware developed by the Israeli cyber arms company NSO Group that can be covertly installed on mobile phones running most versions of iOS and Android. Now, an international media consortium reported that over 300 verified Indian mobile phone numbers were on that list of potential targets for surveillance using this spyware. Also in the news, uh, Navjot Singh Sidhu, who was sentenced to one year in jail for a 1988 road rage incident that killed a man, has surrendered now before the Chief Just uh, Judicial Magistrate in Punjab's Patiala. Now, Sidhu's media advisor has said, and I quote, he is under judicial custody, medical examination and other legal procedures will be adopted, end quote. Now, he had earlier uh, requested time to surrender on medical grounds. Now, the Supreme Court yesterday gave its ruling on a petition by the family of a man who died after a brawl with Mr. Sidhu and his friend in 1988. The family had asked for a harsher sentence and the review of a 2018 order of the Supreme Court acquitting him of murder. On to flood update now, starting off with the Northeast region. The death toll due to uh, landslides in Arunachal Pradesh amid heavy rains has now gone up to eight. Now around 3,000 people in 33 villages of 14 districts have been affected. Moreover, at least uh, 7.6 hectares of cultivated fields have also been destroyed. In the meantime, in Assam, the government has said that it will provide financial assistance of 4 lakh rupee each to the families of those who have died. The death toll is, in Assam has gone up to 9. Around 7.17 lakh people spread over 1,929 villages across 29 districts have now been affected. Meanwhile, in Bengaluru, a Karnataka chief minister has said that a task force headed by a minister will be constituted for all eight zones in the city. This is to monitor developmental work and to take necessary decisions in their respective jurisdictions in case of emergencies. Now, the Chief Minister, along with MLAs and Ministers, has also visited many rain-affected parts of the city because there were heavy rains uh, a day ago and uh, there were also reports of flooding in several parts of the city. Moving away from this now on to uh, another news that's coming in. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation has now granted the air operator certificate to Jet Airways. Now, this means that Jet Airways will now be allowed to resume commercial flight operations. 
Jet Airways had suspended operations in 2019 after its then promoters failed to provide liquidity and the insolvency resolution process started for the airline in June 2019. Now, the Jalan Kalrok uh, Consortium uh, is currently the promoter of Jet Airways. The airline plans to restart its commercial flight operations in July, September, according to reports. Also in the news, the MEA has now revoked actor producer Vijay Babu's passport as he has been accused in a sexual assault case by an actress. Now, according to the police, he was hiding in the United uh, Arab Emirates and may have fled to one of the Caribbean islands uh, where India does not have an extradition pact. Now, his anticipatory bail in the High Court is expected to come up next week. A Malayalam actor earlier had filed a complaint against Babu, accusing Babu of sexually abusing her several times by promising good roles and forcing her to take narcotics. Now, the actor also alleged that Babu, who is the founder of the production company Friday Film House, threatened to release intimate photos and videos of the actress if she lodged a complaint, post which the Kochi police soon booked Babu under Section 376, which is sexual assault, 323 and 506 of the IPC. Also in the news, an SC panel that was probing the Hyderabad encounter case has said that the shooting of the four people accused in the Hyderabad rape and murder case was a fake encounter and an extrajudicial killing. Now, it also added that the 10 police officers who were at the spot should be tried for murder. Now, this is what happened in 2019. Four accused in a Hyderabad rape and murder case were shot dead in an agricultural field located close to the scene of the crime. Now, the commission uh, has now found that the police's version of the sequence of events had several contradictions and loopholes. Moving on to politics right now, according to PTI, CBI has now filed a fresh case of alleged corruption against RJD Chief Lalu Prasad Yadav. Now, uh, he's been accused of taking land from job aspirants in return for employment with the railways. Now, Lalu Yadav has uh, already bo uh, been convicted in five cases and the alleged fraud scam is currently out on bail. According to ANI, the investigative agency conducted searches at 17 places uh, in Delhi and in Bihar. In the meantime, a Delhi court today has directed the CBI to give a three-day prior notice to Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram if it required to arrest him in connection with an alleged visa scam case. Now, Special Judge MK Nagpal has passed the order while dismissing his anticipatory bail plea as withdrawn. Noting that the accused was currently abroad, the court has also further directed that he shall be joining the investigation within 16 hours after he reaches India. Now, the CBI booked him on Tuesday uh, for allegedly receiving 50 lakh rupees to arrange visas for over 250 Chinese citizens. Now, post this, P. Chidambaram questioned the timing of the search and had also taken to Twitter. Uh, he said, and I quote, CBI team searched my residence at Chennai and my official residence at Delhi. The team showed me an affair in which I'm not named as an accused. The search team found nothing and seized nothing. I may point out that the timing of the search is interesting, end quote. On to business news right now. According to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, India has reported the highest foreign direct investment to the tune of $83.57 billion for the financial year 21-22. Now, it also said that the country's foreign investment in flows has increased 20-fold since the financial year 2003-04, to when it recorded at $4.3 billion. The figures of this year have overtaken the previous uh, financial year by $1.60 billion, despite the Ukraine war and COVID, according to the Ministry. On to global news right now. Australia today reported its first monkeypox case in a man in his 30s who recently returned from the UK. Now, according to the authorities, a probable case was also identified in Sydney in a man in his 40s who had recently travelled to Europe. Now, according to several reports, cases of monkeypox has now been confirmed in several countries, including the US, Italy, Sweden, 
uh, Spain, Portugal, Canada and the UK. Now, according to the WHO, this is what monkeypox uh, uh, exhibits. Its symptoms include fever, rash and swollen lymph nodes and may lead to a range of medical complications as well. It's transmitted to humans through close contact with an infected person or animal or with material contaminated with the virus. Meanwhile, an update on what's going on in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Kotabaya Rajapaksa swore in nine new cabinet ministers today. Some of the port portfolios include health, trade, education and tourism, among others. Now, this comes after Rajapaksa uh, reappointed five-time former Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Ranil Vikramasinghe, as the Prime Minister of the country. Meanwhile, it's day 86 of Ukraine crisis. U.S. Congress has now approved nearly $40 billion in aid for Ukraine. And this is its latest tranche of U.S. assistance. Now, this includes $6 billion earmarked for Ukraine to boost its armored vehicle inventory and air defense system. Nearly $9 billion has been set aside as well to help uh, with Ukrainian continuity of government, among other items, including humanitarian aid. Meanwhile, one piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin. Indian boxer Nikhat Zareen has won the gold medal in the 52 kg category at the Women's World Boxing Championship after defeating her Thailand counterpart. Now, in a virtual meet with the media, she said, and I quote, It's a very big moment for me that I have managed to win the gold uh, for the country at the Women's Championships. I'm feeling very happy. Hopefully, I continue performing like this going ahead, end quote. Now, Nikhat is the fifth Indian women's boxer after Mary Kom, Sarita Devi, Jenny RL and Lekha Kesi to win a gold at the World Championships. This was India's first gold medal since Mary Kom uh, won it in 2018. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching.